Hi, this is a video titled Symptoms Related to Small Intestine Bacterial Overgrowth, also known as SIBO. So there's many people today who are now recognizing that their irritable bowel syndrome is actually related to a condition called small intestine bacterial overgrowth, and that's where normal bacteria that normally reside in the large intestine have found their way into the small intestine in larger amounts. And that's a problem because those normal bacteria will ferment certain types of food substances like carbohydrates, for example, and create hydrogen and methane gas, which then creates a host of problems and symptoms and, and issues. So many people with SIBO have prolonged constipation along with food sensitivity, bloating and gas. They could also have loose stools or diarrhea with the same types of problems. There's a host of other things that can come about with SIBO as well. So it's a persistent, sometimes progressive problem that people can suffer with for many, many years. And there's a wide variety of ways of treating it. Diet is always important. Uh, improving digestion, improving motility of the digestive system is critical. And then decreasing the overall amount of bacteria that are living in the small intestine is absolutely essential. <clears throat> so what causes some of the symptoms in SIBO? Well, again, the gas production comes about from bacterial fermentation within the small intestine producing different gases, hydrogen, methane, and sulfide gas as well. The methane is actually produced by a specific type of intestinal organism or bacteria called Methanobrevibacter smithi. And, but again, there's other bacteria that can create the hydrogen, etc. Now, the gas can lead to bowel pain, bloating, sometimes altered bowel movements, a lot of flatulence. Sometimes the gas can get absorbed systemically, and it can also affect the bowel motility, meaning you know how well the bowel moves and digests nutrients. Abdominal pain, cramping, diarrhea, constipation. Methane is primarily the gas that leads to constipation in SIBO. Hydrogen is what leads to diarrhea or loose stools in SIBO. But you can have people who have both. You could have both elevated methane and hydrogen and have more of a mixed bowel pattern where you get constipation and diarrhea that alters. That sulfide gas is what gives that strong rotten egg smell that some people experience with SIBO as well. Heartburn can be related to it. Too much gas pressure pushes up on the stomach and that can lead to heartburn nausea, and then in severe cases, even malabsorption problems, fat-soluble vitamins, B12, iron, etc. And then some people have systemic complaints as well. Their body hurts, they get muscle ache, you know, aches and pains, skin disorders, headaches, etc. So some clinical indicators where irritable bowel syndrome may be caused by SIBO are the following. Now, here's one thing to realize. Everybody with SIBO, everybody with small intestine bacterial overgrowth has irritable bowel, but not everybody with irritable bowel syndrome has SIBO. You can develop irritable bowel after some type of acute infection. So you get food poisoning or you know what's called acute gastroenteritis that can lead to irritable bowel syndrome. Now sometimes irritable bowel can be improved after antibiotics. So that may be an indicator that SIBO exists is if your symptoms improve when you go on an antibiotic. Many people with SIBO get worse when they go on probiotics or what's called a prebiotic, for example, like fructo oligosaccharide. So that may be a clue. Um, if you're constipated and you're increasing fiber intake and it's making things worse, the bloating, the gas, etc., you might be dealing with SIBO. If you've ever had an abdominal x-ray where you've got large amounts of bowel gas, that can be indicative of SIBO. Um, sometimes people who are going off of certain foods like gluten foods where they get, um, normally would get a lot of improvement when they go off those foods, but all of a sudden 
you know, they go off the gluten, they have a known gluten sensitivity or celiac disease, but their symptoms don't improve. That could be an underlying SIBO condition. And then a lot of times, you know, individuals who develop constipation associated with um, irritable bowel or SIBO, I should say, who've taken opiates. So pain medication like Vicodin can shut down the gut, decrease motility, and people then develop SIBO because of that. So we, there's a number of lab tests available through Lab Test Plus, and you know SIBO can be analyzed. There's other tests that look at other triggers for SIBO, you know, from chronic infections to food sensitivities. All of these things can be contributing factors as well. So you can take a look at a list a list of labs that are available at LabTestPlus.com, and one of the things that happens with when tests are ordered through this website is there is a written interpretation that is provided of the relevant markers and then what's called action step suggestions that are made um, for things that can be done to help improve the overall condition. So you can take a look at labtestplus.com for a list of labs. If you have any questions about lab testing, the process of ordering, etc., you can email to labtestsplus at gmail.com. Thank you.